So this problem is a little similar to the one we just worked. We have x of t equals sine 1,000 pi t over pi t, but it's been squared. So instead of a sink problem, we have a, essentially a sink squared problem. So let's work on this. What we're going to do is the exact same thing we've been doing on these problems. We're going to find the Nyquist rate of the signal. So finding the Nyquist rate boils down to finding the maximum frequency component of the signal and then multiplying by 2. So we have x of t equals sine 1,000 pi t over pi t squared. That's what we were given. I really wish that I had a sync function so I could look this up in a Fourier transform table. So to force this into a form of a sync function, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put 1,000 on the denominator, which is really putting 1,000 squared on the denominator. And to undo this, I have to put 1,000 squared out front. So effectively, all I've done is I've multiplied by 1,000 squared or 1,000 squared, which is 1. I haven't changed the problem. But what I have done is I've worked the, in, the interior part of the parentheses here. I've put that into the form of a sync function. So now what I have is x of t is 1,000 squared sync squared of 1,000 pi t. And the reason I like this is because now x of t is written in a form that I can really easily look up in a Fourier transform table. So I go to my Fourier transform table, and I have a pair in there that says capital W over 2 pi sync squared of W t over 2 in the time domain has a frequency domain representation of a triangle function omega over 2w. So now what I need to do is I need to manipulate my x of t into this form from the table. I've already gotten the sync squared part, but we need to work on the coefficients out front. So 1,000 squared sync squared of 1,000 pi t, I can write that as sync squared 2,000 pi t. So, so far all I've done is instead of writing 1,000 pi t, I've written it as 2,000 pi t over 2. And the reason I do that is because in the definition of my Fourier transform table pair, I have wt over 2. So I've already worked that into the correct form. But I have to take care of the stuff out front. 2,000 pi over 2 pi, that's equal to 1,000, right? So I've got 1, 1,000 out front. And then I put 2 pi over 2,000 pi to cancel that out. So I've, only, I've multiplied by 1 now, but what I've done is I've actually written it in a form as of a number over 2 pi. So I haven't changed anything. I multiply by 1, and then I have to have my 1,000 squared. So I have 1,000 squared times 1, sync squared of 1,000 pi t. I haven't changed anything, but I have worked it into a form where this now is perfectly in my table. This is perfectly in the form w over 2 pi, sync squared wt over 2, where w is 2,000 pi. So when I write down the triangle function, I have omega over 2w. W is 2,000 pi, so 2 times 2w is 4,000 pi. So now we're almost done. The Fourier transform of this signal is just the triangle function times all the coefficients left out front. The coefficients left out front were 1,000 squared times 2 pi over 2,000 which if I multiply all this out, I get some cancellation, and this just turns out to be a thousand triangle function omega over 4,000 pi. I can plot this in the frequency domain. This is a function of omega. It's a triangle function, so it looks like a triangle. Its amplitude at DC is a thousand, and its total width is 4,000 pi. So that's how you tell. You look at the triangle function, the denominator there tells us the total width is 4,000 pi. It's centered at zero, so it's going to go from minus 2,000 to 2,000 pi. And it's a triangle function, so that's what it looks like. And now I can easily pick off what the max frequency is. The maximum radial frequency is 2,000 pi. I can convert this to the Nyquist rate by simply multiplying by 2 now. So the Nyquist rate is just 2 times omega max, which is 2 times 2,000 pi, which is 4,000 pi.